yes, we have been dis discussing uh, for, for some time uh, informally about uh, how could we advance the network uh, at the international level. And uh, there was this idea that came uh, several times about creating a, a network of uh, ambassadors. Um, and uh, we had this conversation we, with Don, uh, which I think we started again in, in November with the idea to, to start something in uh, 2020. So the, the idea would be to identify uh, a number of people all across the, the world that would be uh, willing to promote the idea of uh, open recognition. That could be the kind of representative of open recognition. And uh, we, we have, uh, I've made a copy starting 926 of the pad of what would you imagine the duties of uh, an open recognition ambassador. Um, so basically, yes, sign the Bologna de de Declaration and uh, uh, be able to, to represent the, the network at uh, different uh, events. And we imagine that uh, the amount of work it would require during a year could be around I don't know, 40 to, uh, to, to 50 years. And for that, we would publish uh, a badge. And uh, this badge uh, would allow us to create a, a world map of all the ambassadors across the world that are supporting uh, upper recognition and that people would be able to contact uh, if they were interested uh, in upper recognition. We can say that today in France, for example, we receive a lot of solicitations of people who would like to have presentations and uh, asking for documentation. And we need to have more things that are available in, in local uh, languages. It's clear, for example, in French, that we need to speak to French people, to French people in, in French. And I imagine it's, it's the same in uh, other countries uh, as well. So this is the idea to have uh, this network of ambassadors and also that could help us to uh, have a kind of prefiguration of a uh, governance, uh, a loosely coupled governance body at the international level uh, and, and to share. And also one of the things that could be uh, a very practical level we would be able to do uh, in uh, 2020 with ambassadors uh, on a, a technical level, you know that there is this new standard which is coming, which is uh, Batch Connect. And uh, we would hate if the badge, you know, that badges today, they have to be on a platform in order to be issued. And we would hate that if the badge was available on just one platform, uh, and if people were obliged also to use uh, Open Badge Passport today, uh, because it is the only platform that is providing uh, a map representation of badges on, on the world. So with Badge Connect, uh, that would be, uh, the challenge would be to create a world map of all the ambassadors uh, while the ambassadors would have their badges host hosted in the platform of their choice. So that would be also being ambassadors for uh, interoperability. So you see there is multiple dimensions. The first one, which is uh, creating this network and the second dimension to bring a demonstration of the power of, of badges when uh, the different uh, platforms can be interconnected thanks to a uh, badge connect. Uh, and I stop here so uh, people have a chance to uh, react and uh, ask questions or make statements. That's a really good idea, I think, Serge. I think it's something that we've been wanting for a while. Certainly the people that collaborated with me on the um, Open Badges conference that you came to in Southampton some years ago now, um, yes. that we really wanted to uh, make that community more visible. Um, the ambassador idea is one that we've got throughout virtual exchange as well, throughout the virtual exchange initiative with Erasmus Plus. Mm -hmm. We have ambassadors for um, those activities. So it's something that I connect with. And I know um, when people have got in touch with me recently, somebody got in touch with me from Spain who wanted to know more about open badges and I passed them in your direction. So hopefully they, uh, they got in touch. But uh, yeah, good to have a network that's visible. Yeah. 
But also, uh, even in France, uh, we, we have learned that there was a project in the center of France with people from uh, Spain and Slovenia, and, and we never heard of, of, of these people before. Uh, we didn't know that there were people doing badgers in, in, in Slovenia, for example. Uh, we don't know who did it. So this ability to, to, to have at least one person or, or two, it could be, uh, can be more than even than, than two per, per country because it could be people working in adult education, people working in higher education, but to start to, 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 to make this community uh, emerge and we see how powerful it is in France to have this network in France. Uh, now that, that we have this network of uh, Bajon la Normandie, Bajon les Pays de Loire, Bajon le Val de Loire, Bajon la Franche-Comté, we see that it is really spreading now. We have Bajon le Grand Est, uh, we have uh, Bajon uh, the, um, uh, it's called Boat, Bajou Veratus for uh, Nouvelle Aquitaine, which is in, uh, in south of France, where I was uh, yesterday. In fact, I'm still in Nouvelle Aquitaine because now there is a merger between Poitou Charente and Aquitaine. And uh, so, yes, so now the, the, maybe the conversation uh, considering who is here would be interesting to discuss. So how do you think would be the, the right way to, uh, to proceed? Serge, Simone here. Simone, yes. Um, uh, two questions. The first one is, do you think uh, there should be any kind of uh, vetting to the ambassadors? Uh, and secondly, uh, to, to, I guess, to round, up, to round up the first group of ambassadors, um, is there any, uh, do you have an idea of an initial group of people that could be invited to consider the ambassadors or what's your thoughts around those things? Uh, 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 yes to the two questions. Uh, any vetting? Uh, is it one T or two T's in, in English? Sorry. Teresa. Two T's. Two T's, yes. I, I knew there was something wrong. Uh, I felt it. Uh, okay. Thank you, Don. Uh, uh, yes, the idea would be about uh, cooptation. So basically, uh, the initial core network would uh, accept uh, the, uh, the applicants. This would be one possibility uh, to, to do it. Uh, there was this idea also that it could be for, for one year, so there could be some, some kind of uh, renewal. Uh, maybe people could renew. Uh, we, have to, we have to be very flexible. You can say after one year you have to disappear if there is nobody else who wants to take uh, over. But the idea uh, that there is some kind of uh, renewal to give other people opportunity because it's also a way to, to put people forward. So ambassadors are not necessarily uh, the most experts in, in open badges. Uh, they don't have necessarily to agree with everything uh, uh, because uh, so, some kind of a test people would have to, to, to pass in order to, uh, to be a, a, an ambassador. Uh, but it's an opportunity for people to grow uh, uh, and to let and, and to support the growth of the community as well. And now for inviting a first group, we send a few invitations uh, to, to people who have accepted. Uh, for example, um, Olga uh, from Sibarian University, she, she accepted to, to be part of the, uh, of the first ambassadors. And I think it could be, it could be useful if we, if we created a document uh, where we could uh, put a list of, of, of people who would like to, uh, to invite and, and make this list uh, public, I means it could be restricted, the people could uh, uh, write or edit it, have the full editing right, but maybe it could be public and people could make suggestions uh, on, on the list. That could be uh, something, uh, uh, the idea would be tr to provide some kind of transparency on the way it, it, is, it is done. And also we'd be able to maybe, if, if we had a document with a list of countries or regions and, and sectors, could be also a kind of a matrix. Uh, then uh, it could be also an incentive for people to say, oh, uh, 
I, I could be an ambassador for, for that. For example, it could be interesting to have people working in uh, vocational education, people in higher education, people in secondary schools, because it's a different approach. Uh, people uh, working on, on territories, learning cities and uh, learning regions. Uh, one of the things we discussed uh, lately is the idea, how can we use open badges? We had this conversation with Simone a long time ago, but we have not made much progress on it, which, how can we use badges? You know, we tend to associate badges with uh, skills. Uh, so when we think of badges for employment, it's often badges in order to, uh, to support recruitment. Uh, but how about badges to support economic development? So badges used for quality assurance, for example. Uh, badges used to create uh, networks of uh, suppliers in uh, agro, uh, uh, in um, uh, bio uh, food chain. Uh, so we could imagine many uses of, of badges that go beyond the badges in, in, in skills, which was in fact the idea that uh, uh, originated with Badger and Normandy, because the project of Badger and Normandy was a project of agroecology. So it was not just about skills, it was also about a, a vision for the kind of society we wanted to build. So yes, uh, okay, I'm a bit long, but just to say, yes, the potential is uh, enormous and uh, we have to, um, to tap into it. The, uh, one of the ideas that Serge and I were discussing was the, uh, um, in, the, in the letter that we send out to people, basically we say we're developing a badge for it. And you've seen the badge design on, on Twitter. Uh, it's to get people to apply for the badge and say why they want to be an ambassador, what role they hope to fill, and how they're complementary, you know, how, how they fit in, into the picture, and just to make the whole thing a, a little more transparent. We're still working through the, the process, and maybe we can get some ideas about this, is who then decides to accept uh, the application, and, uh, and what process do we use for that? Yeah, I think it's really important that that, that we're walking the talk, that the transparency is there, that the community involvement is there, that, that we um, get some sort of um, almost peer assessment, as you say, sort of a claim. You know, I'm, I'm claiming that I'm, I'm an ambassador for open badges. And here's my example. You know, if I sent my e-portfolio over showing you what I've done with open badges over the last X years, then, you know, this is something I'd be really interested in doing. And also we'd be able to see which areas are covered and which areas are missing as a community. So we'd be able to sort of better target um, areas that are not yet taking off. I mean, I'm thinking I'm coming up to sort of retirement age as well, but so, you know, that kind of comes into the picture for me. And, and I'm thinking increasingly all these young people that I've worked with over the last, um, you know, seven or eight years, many of those have earned their badges and are young people just setting out and have great things to say about the experience of acquiring a badge and, and you know, have taken that on board. So we're currently producing case studies from students who've done virtual exchange and had virtual exchange badges. So, you know, I think we need as well to be looking to the younger generation to pick up the challenge of open badges and uh, you know design their own to uh, think of how they would use them what do they value um, you know I'm sure there are lots of young people who would happily um, get involved in open badges if it was supporting things like um, sustainable development goals if it was supporting things like um, the climate yes. crisis Yes, Teresa, that's exactly what we're doing in agriculture education. At first, we presented it to teachers, you know, and it didn't work, <laughs> like, <laughs> many, like many other things. <laughs> so we, 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 we turned, uh, we made another choice and we, we, we decided to work directly with the students on this uh, SDG uh, projects. We have a network in Normandy and also in every region and also a national network of eco-responsible we call them uh, students and uh, we started to to teach them how to create badges how to use badges so they so they can create their badges for the, on their own 
badges for their learning community, for their peers, uh, for their partner. They can use endorsements. And we are uh, starting it officially uh, uh, February the 5th. In Normandy, we are doing an open batch tour. It means we uh, uh, go in a high school uh, somewhere in Normandy, and we invite all the partners uh, uh, around the, the high school. And for half a day, then we, we create uh, badges around SDGs and we share them. It's, uh, and since we decided that, it, it's uh, much better because with the young people, it's, uh, it, it works. They understand really quickly. Because when you ask the teachers, they understand it like, oh, I have to do uh, all the work. I have to do it. And so that's what I wanted to, to say. Yeah, I think, I think the, the grassroots approach is, is very powerful. Um, it's, it just hits. I mean, I notice it more now because we started out, our initiatives with open badges were, were very much grassroots. Um, and then when I got involved with the um, Erasmus Plus virtual exchange and you scale it up, it hits a point where you have to pay for the platform and you have to, you know, where it gets more complicated. Um, so, yeah, you'd, you'd have to have an eye to, especially if you're asking um, ambassadors to, um, promote and to travel and to do things then you know how how do they do that how do they fund that how do they um, participate but but I don't want to be negative because I think you find a way when you when there are things you, you're passionate about you find a way <laughs> but when we think about uh, uh ambassadors one of the things we discussed also in terms of SDGs to have people who are ambassadors for SDGs so it, it, it shouldn't we maybe in parallel uh, uh, promote this idea that badges can be used for, for engagement uh, and invite people to to become ambassadors for, for SDGs uh, that could be part of how could we come should we combine that uh, or should we keep them totally separate? Uh, how, yeah, I, I would how do you see separate, that? So I, I would keep them separate because the SDG yes. is, um, I, I, I think that's a whole, that would be a whole rabbit hole for people and could confuse people a lot. I, I think we should keep them well, well separated. I'm quite excited by, uh, by badges for SDGs. But I, I'm not sure that should be the same as an open recognition ambassador. Oh, yeah, I agree, agree, no, no, totally, yes, yeah. But in terms of effort, in terms, of, no, no, I know they should be separated. But in, in terms of, of effort, that could be uh, interesting to, uh, to 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 combine. Uh, we don't have to find a solution today, uh, but maybe there is an opportunity to com to combine things. Uh, while keeping them separate, you're absolutely right, Don. We must avoid confusion. At the same time, we can we can also uh, see that if there are any kind of synergies uh, possible. But yes, and it's, it's interesting because I think um, it's a way of engaging companies, also like organizations who would want to show that they they want to support the SDGs, not just individuals. So. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's some uh, things to explore there. Yeah, I think I think we need to grasp the open as well in open recognition, um, because one of the frustrating things I find with the virtual exchange badges is once we've awarded them and we've awarded about four thousand now, they're visible if you're in open badge passport, um, at, or if you're in open badge passport and you've shared them openly. And, you know, that, that's frustrating. I want them, you know, people to, to be proud of them, to show them, to share them. And that's the only way the network can grow. Um, but we, we don't force, we don't, we invite, we suggest, uh, we demonstrate, we tell the story. Um, but yeah, I'd, I'd like to see a bit more open, perhaps facilitated by the platforms themselves. How, how, can you can you develop that point? Um, how would you something more open? What would be uh, what is not open enough, and what 
could be more open. I, I suppose, I mean, compared to traditional credentials where, you know, once they're issued, people take them away and put them in a cupboard somewhere and get them out the next time they go for a job. With open credentialing and open recognition, we should be able to empower people to share what they've earned more obviously as part of their online presence, as part of their digital interactions with people. And it actually gets quite complicated. And when you get to the point where you have to explain to somebody, OK, well, when you've got your badge, import it into Passport and now change the settings and now share it here or put it there. Um, they're still, I suppose, because a lot of the people we're working with are, are in the um, in North Africa. You know, this is already a huge change for them not getting a certificate. Their first, you know, their first concern is, where's my certificate? Where's my piece of paper? Um, and actually what we're saying is, don't worry about that. You've got it as an electronic credential. Now you can share it and save it. But for some people, that sharing is, um, it makes them feel vulnerable anyway. It it's, can be quite tricky. They may well not have a, their own website or use social media particularly. So creating ways to help people make their community more visible to others who are interested you know i think we could get a little bit stronger on that i know open badge passport have made some changes but i think uh, i think we could do more um as you said, we're not going to say it's, we're not going to solve everything tonight. But I think you know it's it's helpful to talk and think about things, and somebody will have a light bulb moment. <laughs> no, you you are right, Teresa, because I'm working with a, a network uh, that uh, <clears throat> works in the field of social cooperation, brings people that are in rural areas a little lonely to to have more social interactions, uh, learn new things, help each other, etc., and the the technological aspects uh, with passport uh, sharing the badge and the um, it's still too complicated um, the um, animators of the association told uh, told me it would be very much easier with a with a phone to share rapidly very quickly with your family with your friends just by with a simple app you know just to make it very easy to share. And also we thought with search, it could be also nice to get be endorsed really quickly by phone because almost everybody has a phone, uh, not in every area, area, but we always have it in the hand and we could imagine something very, just like our, our young people do it there. They share really quickly through their social media or SMS or audio sms so you are totally right we if we want to scale up we have to make it uh, very easy yeah I, I agree with the about mobile applications i think you know an, an app is is a useful tool and and could even prospective possibly be a tool across different badge providers maybe but the the issue of um endorsement and recommendation as well that's at the moment still rather complicated and, and not terribly clear so yeah i think we could strengthen these areas to make it more user friendly um, not everybody buys in at a sort of philosophical level in terms of open recognition at first you know it's there's a there's a novelty factor and if the um if the stakes aren't too high, if it's not too complicated and the novelty is fun, then, you know, gradually you, you dig deeper and gradually you start to understand why this has advantages over other forms. I mean, particularly in our area where, you know, it's an emerging area of academic practice. Um, and, you know, if we'd gone through committee after committee and university after university, we would never get, have got where we've got today. So, yeah, the, the speed of change is, is important um, today. So embracing mobile technologies, I think, is a really good idea. Yeah, reducing the frictions, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 
Okay, no, that's great. So I'm, I'm wondering um, how we can carry this forward. Um, does it make sense, for example, to have a, a badge application um, for people? So in other words, even if we invite somebody to be an ambassador, that they should apply and say why they're an ambassador, what they hope to achieve, maybe make that an annual thing, and maybe these badges have a year on them, and then you reapply if you want to be an ambassador again. Does that, does that kind of uh, thinking make sense? I it like does to me if it's a simple process and and uh, you know sort of inviting community participation it really does make sense yeah um but i think that automates the uh not automates but it's just the right flow i mean if you feel like you are uh interested in uh able to be an ambassador then uh you know, we would want to collect your, your why statement and that becomes you know, part of the process of already being assessed and receiving the badge. So we can handle that all together in the badge issuing claiming process, which you know, makes total sense. Okay. So who should be deciding who gets, who, you know, who is, you know, who who would award the badges basically should we make it a peer assessment should we make it just you know a, a small uh, cabal of, of people who are who are deciding I'm a, I'm a little i think peer assessment's a cool idea i'm just i i haven't actually used it so um i don't know how foolproof it is put it that way do you, do you know what i mean by the peer assessment yeah, I, I mean, I would imagine that you'd want, you know, several people. And I know there is one of the badging systems that I've investigated over time that has has this sort of system whereby you submit for a badge and then several people have to recommend you before you get the badge. Um, and it, in my experience, it hasn't always worked as I thought it would work. But it's a cool idea that you know you put in you put in a link perhaps to your evidence and say I really think I could do this I'd like to do this, and several people then endorse you. Right. Um, so rather than a sort of very strict hierarchy, you've got a, a different people perhaps representing different areas of the community, maybe representing um, the bad platforms and you know, different areas, so that so that you've got a spread. Actually, you, you've just reminded me of something and that relates to that endorsement thing that you say is still not as easy as it should be. But um, what if we, I, I just think the volume is going to be low to begin with. Hopefully it'll grow, but I'm wondering if we, we should start with a more sort of a cabal approach, you know, two, three people who um, would get the applications, but then there could be an opportunity of endorsing. So if I see you've got a badge, Teresa, and I say, you know, Teresa has been, I would be able to, you know, give you an endorsement after the fact and say, you know, Teresa's, um, you know, my knowledge of what you've been doing that gets added on as a sort of an explicit um, further, um, yeah, for, further mention of why you're an ambassador. Yeah, I think it's I think it's a matter of you know recognizing each other within the community, isn't it? Mm. Um, so yeah, it, it it sort of it reinforces the connections. It helps you build an esprit de corps, if you like, um, and uh, and that could spread. Does everybody here see themselves as potential ambassadors? I'd be happy to uh, submit my why statement and see if <laughs> that works. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, that's that's true. You you represent a platform as do I. So you know that's a delicate dance, right? right. How much you talk about badges, how much you talk about your platform, uh, and so uh, yeah. So I mean that's all, and all that can be handled in the why statement, right? So that's uh, that's good. Um, so I'm wondering, Serge, um, maybe we can uh, work together and work up a, a badge application and get people's feedback on it, and then uh, and then publish that. Um, yeah. 
maybe accept some suggestions for people. Do we have the list? Do we have a, a list we can share currently or? Uh, we have to create the list uh, it, it, because it was part of the document we had for the preparation of EPIC uh, 2020. Uh, so we can put a, a new document. I think we can create a, a badge application and also we can create um, a worksheet uh, uh, to share and collect. Okay. Okay. Um, good. So. And also yeah. the idea to uh, uh, also it should be linked to uh, mapping. The idea of a map is, is quite important. Yeah, maybe that's a question we put, and say you know say where you're going to do and maybe what sector. Uh, maybe that's hinting for the uh, longer response, or maybe it's a, a single line answer. And that would, yeah, then be mirrored by where where the where it goes on the map. Yeah. I know sectors can be problematic internationally in that they're not always described in the same way. So we may need some right way of making right. sure that people understand. Yeah, maybe we'd come up with a vaguer term. Um, yeah the nature of the people that you're interacting with or working with or something, whether the age age range or something like that, because certainly in the American and the U S sector, when we start to get into key stage two and three, and it doesn't mean anything to anybody outside the UK. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I think I know what that is, but I'm not sure. <laughs> um, I think it's good not to, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So yeah, so another is maybe it's specialization or particular interest or, or something like that. Yeah. Okay. So, all right. So that's good. Um, any other suggestions for this network? I guess um, at Epic, we're going to feature it and maybe have uh, sort of a roundup of what, what's been happening to date. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I think that would be a make, make for a good presentation. Um, and uh, and look can, for that sort of ongoing sustainability. Sorry. Uh, we can also uh, speak about it at the Open Badge Day and Night on April the 3rd. Oh, did you, did you put that on your agenda? Oh, yeah. La Nuit Blanche. Come on, La Nuit talk. Blanche. <laughs> yeah. right. Not another Nuit Blanche. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, yeah. Okay. We first so thought about April 1st, but April 1st could be April, April 4th, so, people, so it is now April 3rd. April 3rd. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, but uh, that, that, that's a bit like saying, uh, you know, the name of your band is TBA. <laughs> you know, it's, uh, people would say, oh, that's just a, that's just a joke, I won't go. <laughs> yeah. So, um, okay, so yeah, that, that, that will be good. Um, find other ways to mention it. I'm, you know, if we do have some ideas, and maybe we have a, a special, uh, uh, what is it, open badge ambassador recruiter badge. You know, the people who can lure lure people <laughs> into the ambassador network. We have to travel for that. We need the budget. Yeah. Well, there you go. Yeah. Okay. Um, any other? Uh, I, I don't want to cut the conversation short, but I'm, I'm, I'm just sort of wondering if we, if we have other topics to other aspects to this topic to cover at this point, Serge? No, uh, so uh, we, we agree with the idea that we have ambassadors per, per sectors because it is probably important. It's not the same people will in, interact with people 16 to 20, uh, to 20 and uh, people working uh, with people who are retired and also we want to have some cross sector of course but uh, they, have, they have specific needs uh, as well and also ideas and uh, so we need to be able to listen i'm afraid that we will have at the beginning to choose one platform this would be difficult to have it across platforms but it could be also an incentive for the uh, for the platform providers to 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 create something which is compatible with with what is required, and I hope with Batch Connect, we'll be able to make it quite 
transparent by by the end of this year. Right. This should be a goal. Yeah, we'll be hearing more about Badge Connect. I think that's February 26th. Uh, we're going to get the update on, yeah. on, on that Badge Clinic. So after yeah. the MS uh, meeting. So that's and great. Just before we finish, could I, something close to my heart as well as the accessibility of um, open recognition for people with disabilities. Um, so yeah, I'd like to sort of, you know, put, put an, a note there that, you know, let's make sure we're not excluding people because clearly if we're talking open, we're talking about open to everybody. And a lot of the people who need access to um, recognition are the people who either can't afford to, uh, um, to enter mainstream education or whose education is interrupted by their illnesses or disabilities. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, you know, the accessibility of the platform, the availability of this to everybody would be important, I think. Yeah. I agree. I agree. So I think what we can do is probably um, put some scaffolding in the badge application, making some of these suggestions, you know, so here are some ideas, uh, take them as a starting point, that kind of thing. So putting in PWD would be a great, uh, a great addition to that. So, uh, yeah, no, that, that's, uh, that's great. Okay. Um, Serge, I'll leave it to you to wind up. Well, okay. So th thank you very much. I think it has been uh, productive. Uh, we can move to the next uh, stage now. It would be very useful if uh, uh, we could create a chain of ambassadors because maybe Teresa, you know, two or three people that could be good ambassadors and the same with, uh, with Simone, the same with, with us. Mm, I'm and, sure. uh, if we create a, a Google sheet where we can provide uh, a list and suggestions and the people who are responsible for the suggestion, uh, then it could be an interesting uh, conversation. Maybe other ideas will, uh, will spawn out of uh, this activity. It could be, it's, it's a simple activity. So the idea is badge is made, uh, designed to connect people. And so, uh, so it, it's, it's a way, it's a proper way to use badges to create a network of ambassadors. So uh, thank you very much for participating and looking forward to uh, establishing this network. Me too. Thank you very much. Thanks for the session and good to see you again. <laughs> thank you, Teresa. Thank, thank you, Simone. You. Take thank care, everybody. Bye-bye. Uh, Bye-bye. Bye-bye. I'd like to be ambassador for the polls. No, North Pole and South Pole, is it possible? I want to ask. Tahiti. No, yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. <laughs> or, or, like, or Guadeloupe or La Réunion. Well, we have an ambassador for La Réunion, that's, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. Because we are everywhere in France. No, this is really incredible. We're absolutely everywhere. So we should have an ambassador absolutely all, all over the world already, yes. But Africa. We need to, to look uh, at Africa too. And we have a good, uh, good friend, uh, Satu, uh, who is fin Finnish, but she, she speaks perfect uh, French and uh, she, she works in Africa. And I think with Satu, we should be able to also to, uh, to find ambassadors in, uh, in Africa. Because mm -hmm. I, I really think that we can learn interesting from Africa. Absolutely. Uh, We've got loads of connections there too. Yeah. Yes, because we don't want to colonize them with, with badges. We want also for them to, to <laughs> show us new way to use badges. Uh, Absolutely. Ways we, uh, we, we think in France are, are maybe uh, obsolete. Um, well, in fact, they, 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 are, they, they could be the future. So, uh, so Africa would be very important. Excellent. Okay, thank you. Allez, bon courage. Merci, Teresa. Au revoir. Bye-bye. Bye.